Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today at Juanette's Crafting Corner. Before we get started, I would like to say thank you to Beverly. Beverly, you are just a doll. You comment on almost every single video I do, and I really appreciate that. I hope someday I can meet you. Well, today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful ornaments. I made them for my grandchildren, and at the beginning of the video, you saw where I showed that plastic ornament, and I turned it into these beautiful ornaments. Uh, the plastic ornaments came from Michael's, and... I had watched a video of a gal making these and I knew immediately this is what I wanted to do for my grandchildren. Now on two of them are I already have the dangle uh, to hang from the Christmas tree but I will finish up the other two later on uh, this evening after I finish doing this little voiceover. But before we start on the ornaments, I just kind of want to show you what I've been doing with my tag challenge. So the tags are, I think I've shown you most of them before. So this is tag number 44 and the prompt was cross stitch. So I thought I would just cross stitch the word 44. The lace on it comes from Rachel from Italy then ta, ta, uh, excuse me, tag number uh, 45, the prompt was fireworks. Boy, I can't talk tonight. Tag number 46 was it's a wrap. And I had gotten those wooden um, little dowels from Sacred Mementos, and I just wrapped them in some threads and did a few little French knots. Now this tag was, the prompt was Little Birdie, number 47, and I stamped that cardinal with a Stamping Up stamp, and then I did all that stitching there and just hung a little lace at the bottom. Tag number 48 was learning how to do a shift stitch and that's what all the little ornaments hanging from the tree are and the little star at the top. And then my last tag, number 49 here, the prompt was memories. And my best memories are from the women in my family. Now that is a picture of my grandmother who I just absolutely loved dearly spent a lot of summers with her. That was my mother up toward the top, then a picture of me, then a picture of my daughter, and then my granddaughter there at the bottom. And so those are definitely some of my all-time favorite memories is with those women. So I only have a few more tags to do, and then it will be on to something else. I apologize for the glare. So I did show you the ornament at the beginning. They're just a plastic ornament that I got at Michael's. They were half off. I think they were $9.99 for four of them, and so I got them $5 for four of them. So fairly inexpensive. So what I started out with was taking some acrylic gesso and then just putting a couple of coats over that plastic. And I took that little oh, circular thing to hold the ornament so I wouldn't have to touch the paint. And I did, like I said, put two coats on, uh, put on a coat, then let it dry and then put on another coat. And that was just to give me a little bit of a base to decoupage my images on.
Then after I let them dry, like I said, after two coats, then I took a napkin. You've seen me do this before. These napkins, oh, I may have got them at Tuesday morning. Oh, or maybe in Washington. But anyway, they're made in Germany. They're absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to do my little trick that you've seen me do before where you take your layers off using scotch tape. So that's the first layer. This is a three-ply napkin. So there will be another ply to take off. And then I only want to use the gold and beige part. So I take a stamping up water pen, that's just water in there, trace it around the area that I want to tear, and then the bow and the holly I will save for another project. I hope everyone is doing well and getting ready for Christmas. Uh, I still have lots to do, but of course I wait till the last minute to do it, it seems like. Ugh, crazy. So then I just tear little pieces off because my images that I'm going to decoupage on the front of the ornaments don't fit all the way around the ornament. I need something on the sides. So I'm just taking full strength Mod Podge. I think I'm looking for my, <laughs> my images there. They are rice paper that I ordered from a company called a I S T crafts. They are in Slovenia. And then that rice paper right there is Stamperia. The one that I got from Slovenia is very high quality. You can tell. I, as you can see, look at how beautiful those images are. Oh, just stunning. You can Google that store if you want to order, but I'm not sure I will order again from them. Even though I placed quite a large order, uh, the shipping was $46. So I've torn my images and then just kind of looking to see which images I'm going to use and to make sure that the stars and beige color will go well with the side of the ornament. You don't see much of the side because I put some uh, adornments on that side there. So I take full strength Mod Podge and just decoupage the napkins onto the side of the ornament. On some of the ornaments I even put it on the front So you just lay down some decoupage, put your napkin piece over the top, and then more decoupage, I meant to <laughs> Mod Podge, over the top of it. And then just let it dry. So I finally had to turn on my heater today in Arizona. It was a little bit chilly for me because it's so hot here in the summer. I tend to keep my house very cool so I think my thermostat is set at like 66 degrees but it it was like 61 in the house this morning so I thought oh I guess I better turn it on and heat up this house a little bit. But by the time I made dinner, it was 73 in the house, just on its own. So there, the uh, ornament has dried. Now you want to make sure that when you decoupage 
the rice paper onto it that is going to be in the correct orientation, not upside down like you see there, because it will be hanging from the tree and you don't want that image is upside down. So just be aware of that. And because it is rounded corners, it is best to tear your rice paper just ever so slightly and then it will fit around the ornament a little bit better. I'm trying very carefully not to tear into any of the images or the faces. Looks like I had to tear just a couple of more spots so that it would wrap around nicely. When I do decoupage it on, there are a couple of little wrinkles in it, but it doesn't matter. To me, it just adds to the character of the ornament itself. So here again, I'm taking full strength Mod Podge and applying it to the center of the ornament and then I will lay that rice paper over it and then add some more Mod Podge over the top of it. Even though it looks white, when I apply the glue, after it dries, it's clear. I'm excited because in a couple of days I get to go see my daughter. Unfortunately, uh, the big C word that's been around here for two years uh, hit their home a couple of weeks ago. They've done beautifully. My daughter said it felt like just the flu and a bad cold. It kind of went through the entire family, but thank goodness they're all doing very, very well. But I had to stay away just because of my age and uh, my history of asthma, so I'm excited that I finally get to go see them later on this week. So you can see that the top of the ornaments are silver in color, but I'm using a lot of gold. Now this is wax paste gold color. The brand is Pentart, and I ordered that from, um, oh, what was the name of, uh, oh, Seth Apter, S-A-T-H-A-P-T-E-R. You can Google um, that information. I believe it came from somewhere in New York, but uh, this is fantastic stuff because it's really waxy when you apply it, but after you have it sit for a while, it feels completely dry and doesn't feel waxy at all. So I cover, covered all of the tops of the ornaments. It leaves you with gold fingers. Remember that movie? It was a James Bond movie. So now that my ornaments have dried uh, the decoupaging on them, and even though I only have three grandchildren, I did four ornaments. I may keep one for myself or, or give it as a gift. And so now I want to add some, um, what's it called, some molding around the edge. These are called redesign 
Decker molds. I got them from scrapbook.com. This first one has lots of little scrolls. They're very high quality, you can tell. And then the other one I ordered is this butterfly and dragonfly one. Uh, one of my next journals I want to make is a butterfly journal. And I ordered it for that, but then when I saw those stars, I thought, oh, that's absolutely perfect for these ornaments. Now, I had purchased at Michael some clay, air dry clay, and the brand is called, I think, Craft Mart. I'm going to show it to you here in just a second. Like I said, it's from Michael's Craft Smart. Um, I probably would not buy this ever again. It is, it didn't come out of the mold very easily. It's very sticky. Maybe it's because it's very wet. It was difficult putting into the mold. And I wanted to be able to pull it out of the mold and wrap it around the ornaments. And I suppose if you just left it in the molds and let it dry completely, it would pop out. But it, it didn't. So I actually then went back to Michael's and got a different product. Now, these are some molds that I bought at Michael's. They're for uh, fondant, for, you know, cake decorating and what have you. One of those molds with the flower kind of looked like a poinsettia flower to me, and then the leaves there, and so I thought I would use them. Now, I've already put some of them on the ornaments, and they it does dry white. But I wanted to show you what I finally learned on how to do this the easiest way. So I took some baby powder and I just tapped it into the mold there. That helps it release better. And that's just plain old baby powder. It's cornstarch that I got at Walmart. Now this stuff is fantastic. I will buy this again. It's called Delight. It's air dry modeling compound and it's not sticky at all it it fits into the mold beautifully uh, it, it's really really good stuff so what I do is just press it into the mold there And then I took a palette knife and then just scraped off the top and then put it in that other star there. This stuff is fantastic. Like I said, it, I got it at Michael's. Oh, and this was, this was fantastic. So it runs about $10 a package, but I had a $5 reward coupon from Michael's. So that took $5 off. And then I also had a 40% coupon off. And so I think I paid $0.42 cents for this bag of modeling clay. So make sure you register with Michaels to get those rewards because it really does um, pay off. So I did not let this dry at all. Now make sure to keep it soft. You wrap it up and I put it in a little plastic baggie, folded it over, and then I also put it in an airtight container. 
just I'm pushing the insides in just a little bit just to give some good definition to those stars. And I suppose if I let them dry just a little bit, they would come out even better. But look at how, how good that came out, considering I literally had just put it in the mold. And I can just shape the point to that star. And there's going to be so much paint and glitter and flakes on that star that you're not going to even be able to tell that it's misshaped a little bit. But that stuff is fantastic. It's called Delight. And it is delightful. Oh, that clay, I was like ready to throw it up against the wall. It was, well, what I put in the mold after a while, I just threw it out. It was, it was driving me crazy. But do you see how I'm actually able to bend those over? And so they will be able to form around the the ornament now this is some uh super heavy gel that i also uh i got this at hobby lobby it's a real thick kind of a glue and it's for more heavy duty projects and i just paint a little bit on the back of that star and apply it to the ornament and then left it a you know to be to dry It was a little bit um, fiddly because I didn't want to bend that star. And I keep kind of like dropping it almost. And <laughs> I think I went, oop, there. <laughs> but see, I just kind of glue it up even over the top of that ornament there. Besides the stars, I did some of those scrolls on a couple of the ornaments. I did some leaves, uh, the poncetia flower. And I still probably have three-fourths of that delight bag left over. That was from the uh, the mold that I got at Michael's, the little fondant mold. If you don't know, I believe that says Merry Christmas in Italian. Now this I purchased from Seth After. It is a flaky texture paste. Uh, they also had a sand paste that I bought and then I have just your regular texture paste but I liked this flaky one. To me it kind of felt like it would be like snow. You can see I pointed the price there. What did I show? Like almost five dollars and ninety cents or something like that. Yeah five dollars and ninety cents but I bought it on Cyber Monday and so I got twenty percent off. And it just squeezes out of that bag and then that um, lid just screws back on so it will stay nice and moist. It won't dry out. And so I'm just applying it on all of the ornaments. I'm going to put a little bit of music on, put it on high speed, and finish up these ornaments with this texture uh, flaky paste.
And so now I'm going to add some paint. This is deco art paint that I bought at Michael's. There is a champagne gold and a glorious gold color. And I used both colors on each ornament. This one I haven't I hadn't even opened before. Now that texture paste has dried along with the um, scrolls and stars and stuff. So I am applying this paint using a stamping up sponge. Just dipping it into the paint and tapping it on this, the uh, dried stars and, and adornments. And I go back and forth between both colors just to vary it a little bit. It really makes it look very rich. Now, I don't know what happened with the focus of my camera, but I've got these book rings and I took some more of that wax paste and I, the book rings were silver. So I put some of that over the book rings, even though I ended up covering them because I didn't like the way they looked. Um, but then I took some red and gold ribbon. I first staple the uh, one end to the other end there just using uh, Tim Holtz's little stapler just to hold it in place and again I apologize that my camera's out of focus I I don't know I don't know what happened but I just start wrapping that ribbon around that ring adding a little bit of art glitter glue to the underside and then wrapping it through again just so that ring doesn't look so industrial I just I didn't like that that hinge part I thought it looked tacky Again, just wrap, a little bit of glue, wrap, a little bit of glue. And then I take my hemostats to hold it in place while it completely dries. Now this is deco art. Again, I got this at Hobby Lobby. It's called Triple Thick Brilliant Brush on Gloss glaze and again my camera was out of focus but I just used a paintbrush and painted some over the front and back of each ornament just to give it that glossy glass like finish and then I just set those aside to dry I put them on top of those big uh, movie theater cups so that they uh, they wouldn't uh, fall over. Now that is called, uh, again I got it at Hobby Lobby, it is a matte varnish and I take a little bit and brush it on the sides of the ornaments and then just add a little bit of glitter that I have Can't have too much glitter, can you? This first one I used a little bit of uh, iridescent glitter, and then I didn't really like that, so I added a little bit of gold glitter over it, and then the other ornaments I did use gold glitter. So I'm just setting these aside to dry. I'm, um, I think they came out fantastic. I think my grandchildren are going to really enjoy them. 
I, I look forward to a day when I know I will be long gone and they will look back and say, oh, my grandma made that for me when I was, you know, 10 years old or 12 years old. That's what this is all about. So thanks for joining me, everyone, and I will see you next Monday. Bye.